So now we're going to take a look at the kind of Python code we can write to manipulate these data models. So to do this, we're going to use what I call the Django shell. Now the Django shell looks a lot like the Python shell, except that there's a whole bunch of stuff preloaded. You, you can't just run um, you know, Python 3 in interactive mode. You see the Chevron prompt. On Linux, you see a bracket prompt. It, it's, the, it's the same shell. But in the, in the Django shell, what happens is, is it actually reads the settings.py and goes and finds all the applications in settings.py and preloads the applications and then gives you a shell. So it's like it, it, there's a bunch of things that happen that's not just a shell that are done before you're in the shell. And this statement of from book one models import book lang instance, that wouldn't work if you just ran the Python shell by itself. That's because the book one application was loaded by python3 manage.py shell. After that, you've got all these things preloaded, but then you can pretty much run any Python that you want that messes with all of your Django classes and objects, etc., etc. So let's take a look at the kinds of things that we can do. So if you remember, our data model was named lang for language. And so we can create a new object in memory with lang parenthesis name equals quote en quote. And, and that basically says, give me a new language object and set the pr parameter, the, the, the attribute name to be en. And give, and give that to me back in a variable. That's a, an object-oriented constructor. That's, we're constructing an object. Now that doesn't store it in the database. That simply creates it in memory and gives it back. So it's a, it's a Python object with a attribute. It knows it's a language. Now, the save method, z.save, that is the thing that says, you know what, I've got this thing in memory, please persist it to the database. Write it, transmit it to the database, and come back. Now what's cool about that is this ID column, that's been set at that moment. So we can say, what ID did we get? So remember how every row that we put in a model gets an ID value, and we're going to use that ID value as the handle to point to. So this is the primary key, which is the way we point to a row in a table. So then what we can do is we can make a book, right? So we made a language, we made a language, and we know what its ID is. Now we're going to make a book, and it's got like a title and an ISBN. And what we do is we say, and the language is Z. Now Z there is that variable. Now we don't use the ID. Django knows all about how IDs work, and so it knows when you're saying lang equals Z that it's going to make a lang ID and put the ID of the language row in. Foreign key, all this stuff's just done. You just have to have a variable that has an ID value and pass that in. So what that's doing is that is making a book and then connecting it to a lang, right? Now that's also not saved until you save the book. The book is now transmitted to the database. It has a foreign key in it. It gets its own primary key. So it's primary, it's the first book that we've inserted. So it's primary key x.id is one. And then we can make an instance and the instance needs a do back, which is a date, and then it needs which book it is, and we use that variable x to indicate which book that we're talking about. So that's just creating a link from the book instance in memory that we get back in the variable a. It's a book instance that points to the book that's it's in the variable x, which is py for e, ISBN 42. And then we save that. And that has an ID. So now we have created a language record. Then we created a book record that linked to the language record. And then we created a book instance record that linked to the book record. Okay. And so that is, you know, this, this, this whole linking thing, right? So these are the pointers. And, and what Django is doing in this situation is Django is trying to hide from us the whole idea of the foreign keys and the primary keys, other than me asking what the ID is, it's not really something you have to do. So all those asking for the IDs aren't necessary. You just say, look, I have a book and its language is this thing. I don't know what its ID is. You should please make me a column and do all this magic stuff. So, so much of the bookkeeping of these one-to-many relationships or foreign key relationships in general in Django is just done automatically. <clears throat> now, we can retrieve these and we can sort of walk down these things, walk through these things. So here we are again in samples and we run the shell and we import our models and um, we can say book.objects and, and book is a class from our models. 
It's book1.models.book. And then we, a lot of the methods that we talk to inside of these classes are under the attribute dot objects, which is, you could think of it as all of the rows in a sense, or all the objects in this, in this model, all the rows in the table that lives there, book objects, and then get is like, which one do you want? Get PK equals one, PK means primary key. I don't know, I think it would make more sense if we called this ID, but it, I, I, ID is the name of the column of the primary key is really just kind of a, a convention that's done 98% of the time. It's not required, it's not the truth, but it's so common that it might as well be. But PK really means primary key, which might be, which nine out of 10 times is the column ID. So we're loading from the books table, we're pulling that in, and we're getting the one, the row number one from the books table. So if you say what the title is, well, the title of that is PY4E. Now, there's, there's a title, but then there's lang. Lang is that foreign key that points to the language. And so we can say x.lang, that is the entire language row, but x.lang.name is within that row, it's the name column. So we sort of walk down the little arrow and grab one of the elements out of that. So it's like walking from a book to the language, corresponding language row and then pulling the name out of that corresponding language row. So I think that's a really pretty syntax and it starts to make sense after a while. You walk down, walk through the little arrows. And this is why the picture of the data model is so absolutely important. Oops. And then, um, and so now we're gonna go grab the book instance number one, the first row of the book instance table. So instance.objects get pk equals one. That says, give me that first row, give it back to me in the variable y. What is the do back of this one? And then you can sort of walk it. You can say, I'm at a book instance and I want to follow the foreign key to the book table to get me a book and then give me the title of that book, right? So from a book instance, you can walk to the book table and then get the title of the book and then we're, and we get py free. So you see this sort of starting from one row walking to another uh, the corresponding row that's pointed to by this relationship. And that's the essence of this. We're gonna do this a whole bunch. By the time we come back to this, this will all seem, uh, all seem pretty straightforward.